Okay, so in this video we are going to be covering the, uh, the uh, material workflow for applying materials to multiple objects uh, in a large scene uh, like this. And what I've done is I've pre-recorded the, um, the workflow and then I'm just going to sort of be talking over it since, um, since I repeat a lot of the same steps. So, um, alright, so here we go. And here we go. Alright, so uh, what I do is I select by name a group of ob objects. So in this case I have all the EQP um, drawings, uh, excuse me, objects selected and then I right click and I go to isolate selection which helps uh, get rid of some of the some of the stuff that might be blocking these objects or my view of these objects. Uh, and then I am just going through and applying materials to uh, different um, different objects. And you can see in the uh, in the slate material editor, uh, when I need to create a new material, I will just hold shift and click and drag uh, an ob a material to create a new material. Uh, so right there, I opened up the Max Script listener and I just said. Uh, for every object where the material is undefined, collect it into an array and then select that array, which helps me quickly get to uh, the objects that don't have materials um, and freeze the ones that do have materials. So that's what I did here. I'm isolating each object uh, type and then I'm applying material and then after I apply the material, I freeze it so I don't have to worry about selecting it again. Uh, and then you can see over in the slate material editor, I will just select a material and then shift drag it to a new location, uh, give it a new color, new name, apply it to the objects. Um, so right there, I am. Some of the objects got merged together, like some of the tube steel was with some of the other steel. So I uh, I just went ahead and um, detached the parts that weren't like each other. And you'll see I do that with the bridge here uh, as well coming up in a second. But all the braces, uh, they're, they're all getting the same material and uh, the steel's all gonna get this white material. And the cool part is that you can just, if you don't like the color scheme, you can just uh, change it later. Um, as long as everything has the same material, it'll all change. But I think the important thing is that like objects are getting the same material. Um, if, the, if that's what works for you in your project, then do that. If not, obviously, um, don't. So just going through and uh, selecting stuff and creating new materials. Um, cable tray. The cable tray is kind of messed up, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, have to make a tutorial on how to fix that. It's really easy. And then uh, just keep selecting, applying materials, freezing, selecting, applying materials, freezing. And those guys, I, I decided to uh, get rid of them later. Um, here we have some stairs that are attached to this building, so I just detached them and uh, applied the, what I put on the other steel, material, uh, steel objects. All right, so this bridge, uh, it's got, obviously it's got railings, it's got uh, tube steel, it's got regular steel, so I'm just detaching everything that I'm going to apply a similar uh, material to. I'm going to detach it, and I actually messed up and grabbed some tube steel, so I'm going to have to detach that and then reattach it to all the other tube stuff, so I was just checking right there just to make sure I did that. Um, of course, we have the railings, which are going to have to come off, so I detach and I say, you know, handrail bridge. That way, if I go to select all the handrails, I'll select that one. And I can select by material or name. All right, so what I'm doing with the crane here is I'm going to uh, detach the parts of it that I want to be able to animate. So the boom here, I'm going to detach it. And then I have to move the pivot point down to the, uh, to the base of the object. And since it starts off as not being square to the world then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to write just a little script here to get to get the normal direction of the face so that I can align uh, the uh, 
the helper that's going to be animating it to that to that face. So that's what I did, and uh, you'll see here in a second. I just say get the face normal of that face, and then I do that, and then uh, I select the dummy object, and I just say your direction is going to be that normal. So now I can move it along the normal. I parent the boom back to it, and now when I rotate the dummy, the boom rotates with it. Parent, by the way, is using the select and link tool uh, to link back to the uh, the controlling object, which is the in this case it's the dummy. And then I'm creating another dummy, and so that dummy is going to control the uh, sort of the horizontal rotation, and the the first dummy there is going to control the uh, the up -z, down z rotation around the x axis. And now I am uh, doing something. Oh, I'm looking up uh, colors, color scheme for the crane. And that red looks nice. Hold on. God. That was my beautiful wife who I love and cherish dearly. Trying to make it look similar to that crane so people don't judge me <laughs> too harshly no, I'm kidding so uh, so then you see these overlapping faces right there uh, the the deck and there's like two decks so that's really really bad you don't want that so anytime you have overlapping faces like that handle it all right so now I'm just sort of creating the uh, I don't know what these are called rollers gears cable handler things uh, and what I've done is I've just selected all the borders and then I held shift and drag drug the mouse and uh, that's gonna create new borders and then uh, I just sort of worked with scaling them up and down to get them to uh, to look like they're okay and then I'm removing the old bad ones I just made a copy of that good one and I'm removing the old bad ones now and, and replacing them with the good ones yep and I am now attaching them so that's why it asked for the material so I reattach those all to the uh, to the uh, the upright portion and let's see here I'm just sort of testing this out and I drug a um, I sort of skipped over there I drug a just a spline object over to the end uh, to the tip of the crane and then another spline down so there's actually two separate splines and now I am mistakenly um, I thought these were platforms so I am applying a great material cre uh, creating and applying a great material that has a bitmap uh, to the material uh, diffuse color and then the cutout which is going to make it transparent at the the black parts um, and little do I know that these because I'm not looking that these are plates I think they're platforms uh, so assuming has made an ass out of me and me and I'm gonna I'm just rendering to make sure that it's looking sort of like a plate all right sorry a, a platform that is not and then this of course is a walkway even though it says right there plate <laughs> so um, plus 10 for not paying attention all right, but if it was, I'd just be trying to match it up. All right, so now I am just, again, it's easy to skip things that uh, don't have materials, so I just run that script again that selects everything. And then these guys, I decided they, um, they uh, didn't need to be there, so I hid them. But when the designer saw that, he would say, or she would say, no, put those back, and then I would just unhide them. And so now I'm just checking out the different angles and uh, uh, seeing what's kind of a cool angle to render this out. And I'm um, rendering it, as you can see, at five times the speed that it would normally be rendering. And uh, yeah, so that's cool. And let's see. What am I doing? Oh, I'm saving it just a mere 30 seconds left now um, and then I'm just gonna adjust the uh, the color 
Oh no, I'm not. I'm rendering this top scene, which actually was cool because I like the way the the sunlight sort of sheens off of that top uh, cooler um, right there. And you can you can play with that in post process, you know, and really bring out that sort of that reflection and uh, uh, make it look really cool. But I thought this was kind of a cool angle, and uh, this actually took a very long time to render. Relatively, it's only 640 by 480, but uh, and generally, when you test render something, you want to kind of dumb down the uh, the settings and dumb down the resolution, so you don't really have to wait this long. But I figured everyone would be really impressed, except for that <laughs> that brace going right through the cooler. But I, you know, I'm sure they just drill a hole in the cooler or something for that. All right, so that is it. And the last few minutes here are just, uh, I think I went to go get a Pepsi. But she wouldn't give it to me. All right, so uh, thanks a lot, everybody, and I hope you found this useful, Joel Harris. <laughs>